I'm dressed in tight fitting black clothes and you might wonder why it's because it's measurement day I have elastics to put around certain areas of my body I have a tape measure, my comfy underwear and a camera and we'll be doing this together so stay tuned Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from liftingpinsandneedles.com Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing Limitless Sewing and this is episode 2 of the mini series I'm running on the channel that is going to help us fit simple tops, woven tops with a buster and a sleeve. We are not fitting a dress with a really fitted bodice with a thousand darts that hits the waist and has a separate skirt. We are not doing that because that is a little more advanced and that can come down the line. Once we've learned about our body and how to do the basic fitting adjustments to get these patterns to work for us. If you've missed episode one, go ahead and watch it. I will put a thumbnail here so you know how it looks like and link it down below. There I give you an introduction of what this feeling series is going to be about, the goals and I give you some pattern recommendations. Maybe you have these patterns or you can look for something similar in your pattern stash that we can work through. It's basically a woven top, has a front on the fold, the back can have a center back seam, there needs to be a bust out, some type of shaping there, a normal sleeve and semi-fitted, loosely fitting maybe at the waist and hips, we're not looking into anything too fitted. My goal is that we learn how to fit all this area and that we have a lovely, lovely fitting woven top and that knowledge we can use to build on for other designs that are a bit more advanced. So it's measurement day. I'm dressed in a really tight black shirt and black leggings and I have created a printable for you. I will leave the link in the description box to my website where you can access a page on my website where I'll be adding downloadable things. It is password protected though so you need to type in there limitless sewing altogether that is the password so you can enter that. You'll find the downloadable chart that you can have next to you. For measuring myself I will be following that order and you can follow that order. It doesn't have every single measurement you can take in the world. We are not drafting our block, our sloper. We are not doing that. We are just taking the basic measurements and actually a bit more than the basic measurements to start feeding ourselves. When we usually choose our size from a pattern chart, we are only basically using three, maximum four measurements to choose. And they are all circumferences. You probably see the high bust, the full bust, the waist and the hips on the chart. And that's how we choose our size but it's not reasonable to expect that to fit us because we have heights as well in our body that might not match the pattern. We have areas here that create shape that need that. This area of the shoulder has a shape going down. This is a dart, but not a dart, but it's not anything straight. Same as around the bust, down to the waist, there's also an angled area. So those are things that we are not taking into account when we choose a pattern size or when we look at a pattern and those are the ones that can vary the most so we'll be taking circumferences plenty of them but we'll be also taking height measurements of our bodies so get ready and let's hop into it okay so i've got tightly fitted clothing i am doing this with clothes obviously if i were doing this for real i would just be in my best undergarments just comfy undies and a well-fitting bra but I can't really measure myself like that online, so here you go. I will be showing you where and how to measure everything. My measurements in this case are skewed because I have a whole layer of clothes on top. So whatever I measure now serves me absolutely no purpose, but the how and the where will serve a purpose. Measurements we'll be taking will be going around the body circumferences and we'll be also taking vertical measurements as well. I will be following an order that you can find in the printable. It's the same thing I'm going to do right now. I have some quarter inch elastic that I'm going to use to help me place this around certain points of my body. The elastic will just be a really good guide. So I'll go ahead and wrap the elastic around the fullest part of my bust my waist and my hips for now and then we'll start measuring. I have this elastic around the fullest part of my bust and around the smallest part of my waist. The important thing is that it needs to be level parallel to the floor so we can't have one tilted down or going up and the back as well. So I'm really really looking to see that it's nice and straight parallel to the floor. I recommend using a quarter of an inch wide elastic, it's not going to skew your measurements as if you used a really wide one. Now I'm going to take a measurement that you don't see anywhere else and this is from the nape of the neck on both sides across. 
like that. It's half of this measurement that is going to help us make a template and it's what we can use to reference on a pattern lots of these height measurements we're going to take. So take this across the neck measurement from the nape of the neck to the other side all the way across and write that down what it is. You'll be using half of that measurement later. I've tied up my hair for the next one and we're going to measure across the back. Now, when you place your finger here on your shoulder and you lift, you feel the bone move and where that moves, you feel that your finger goes in slightly. That's where the shoulder joint is. So figure that out where it is for you. And we're going to be measuring from one side to the other, but we do this on the back. So we take the tape measure and we place it behind us, right where we feel it, let your shoulders have a good posture, the way that you always stand, don't be going like this, just let your shoulders hang naturally and measure from one side to the other on the back, like that. Write that measurement down. I have two elastics at my waist because one is one that I'm going to bring up higher so that we can measure our armhole depth which is usually where we measure our high bust circumference. So we can see that our arm starts under there where, where the crease of your arm is. Make sure this is nice and straight as well. This is a good measurement to have as reference if you're petite or taller than the standard. And measure from the base of the neck. This is the reference point we'll be using for height measurements. Right there at the base where your shoulder starts sloping down, right there to that height right there. See what that is and write it down. Make sure whenever you're taking measurements that are vertical, that your tape measure is going perpendicular to your little elastic that you have. You don't want to be doing diagonal measurements where your tape measure goes slightly off. You want to always keep it really vertical. Write what that is. That's gonna help us do things with the sleeve later on if we find that we need to do length adjustments up here on the upper chest because you're petite or you're taller or the armhole is just not fitting you nicely, that's a good way to have a reference to what that is on your body. Now, in the same place is where we take the upper bust measurement. Now, some people say that it's better to take this without the bra. I'm obviously not going to do that, but it needs to be a very snug measurement. Make sure your tape doesn't fall down like it is here on mine. Make sure it's nice and straight across and that it's above the bra, above where you have your bust fullness. You can see my bust fullness is below that. If this is right on the top, and this circumference is going to be smaller than your full bust, and the difference between this measurement and this measurement will help you see what sewing cup size you are. So write down what that is. And now we're going to take the measurement of the full bust. At the highest part of the bust, you can see on the side there, my tape is going straight all the way around. It's not going down or anything. So we'll take that measurement here. All these measurements, they are body measurements. Take them snug, don't take them really loose or so tight that you're actually making that tape dig into you when you're measuring, just nice and snug like that. Write that down. Continuing measurements around the bust. You look down, you see where the top part of your bust is on each side and you want to measure from one apex to the other basically from one nipple to the other, if you could see them, they are inside your bra, that distance there. It's really nice to know what it is because it's going to help you do bust adjustments later. So that distance there. If you look down, if you were measuring your bust height, you would go right up to the apex on both sides. It's that distance in between. Now continuing on the bust, this is crucial for me, it's very crucial. It's where you find a lot of discrepancies with patterns and where a certain pattern has placed their bust height, which might be different to you. So same from the nape to of the neck right here, this is the reference point. Measure straight down to where your bust height is, right there. So it's really, really important. I sort of know this one by heart. It doesn't change much for me with weight loss or weight gain. It tends to stay the same, but it could change if it's a dramatic weight loss or a dramatic weight gain. This is a height where I want my darts directed to. I don't want my darts being up here. I find that most patterns are about an inch too high for me. So this measurement is super crucial that you know and you sort of memorize it. I have it in my head from the base of the neck 
down to the fullest part of the bust right there. Next, we are going to measure the waist. Now, the tops that we are feeding are sort of loose feeding tops. None of them are fitted fitted, like a fitted bodice. But it's still good to know how much ease you have around the waist. You might have a preference for that. For some people, it's harder to determine where the waist is. I can, on my body, see where my waist is quite easily. But for other people that have more athletic or just more rectangular figures, it might be harder to know where it is. I think for most people who have a hard time figuring out where it is, they tend to choose a lower point. And sometimes it's got to do with how you wear your pants. Sometimes your pants are lower rise and they hit down there and then you might think this is your waist down here. Just bend over. It's most likely going to happen where your natural waist is. So find that place, put your hands up here, feel your rib cage coming in there. It's usually around there. It might be higher or lower than what you expect. Find that place and measure it. Make sure you are level, that your waist elastic isn't dipping anywhere, that it's nice and parallel to the floor. And just measure it snugly. Not tight, like you don't want to do this to yourself. You also don't want to be measuring like this. Just nice and snug, nice and accurate and write that down. Now, another height measurement that we are going to do now is going to be where our bodice height is. Now, this is so crucial for fitted bodices, especially the ones that have a seam at the waist and then have a skirt. But also in the tops that we are going to fit, you will find a notch that marks the waist where it goes in and then it goes out slightly. And if that is not in the correct height for you, you might end up with a smaller section of the waist that is lower than you or higher than you and it's just not going to look right. So it's good to know. From the base of the neck here, this is the reference point that I like. I like it because we are going to create a template that you can put against a pattern to always have the right reference. Measure straight down going over the bust. The bust is right there so you will be measuring over that lump right there up to that elastic. And you will have a height there that you can write down because of the lump excess that the bust creates on the front, this measurement will always be longer than the one on the back. If you do this from the back, same reference point, the base of the neck, straight down to the elastic there, you will have a measurement that is going to be shorter than the one in the front, but it's always good to know and you can compare that to patterns. I've moved the camera down so we can take some measurements down lower. So we'll keep one at the waist, we'll take one of these, and shuffle it down to the fullest part of the hip. Now this can vary for people, you can have the fullest part be around this area, but for others it could be lower and incorporate part of the thigh, depending on where you have fatty tissue on your body due to genetics or just your body type. So move it around, look sideways, make sure you are at the fullest part. I believe that's my fullest part right there. So I want to make sure this elastic also is parallel to the floor, as is my waist. I'm going to take this third elastic and put it halfway between those, and that will be my high hip area. This high hip area will usually go across your fullest part of your tummy as well. You also want this parallel fiddling to make sure they are all very, very well placed right there. Okay, so we've already done our waist measurement. Now we can do our high hip measurement right here. Some people like to wear their pants here, I don't. <laughs> Take it nice and accurately, This, is depending on how big of a tummy you have. For some people, this actually might be bigger than the full hip or not. You know, you'll find differences here or you might find that there's not much difference at all right there. And then let's go down and measure the full hip. Now this is where my full hip is, yours might be higher or lower. It's all different for everyone. So find that there. I only have two inch difference from my high hip and my full hip. It's not much difference. That's also got to do with the tummy I have here on the front creating that. Another good measurement to have is the waist and the hip difference. What is the difference between there? Now some people like measuring from here, but this is not where you will see this on patterns. You know, um, I'd like to measure it from the notch of the waist. That's where I find the, the reference on patterns will be easier to find. So let's measure this on the side from the waist down to the fullest part of the hip. What is that distance there? This is a vertical measurement. Do this one with the tape hanging down straight, perpendicular to the floor and write down what that is. You know, this could be 9, 10, 11 inches. It just depends. 
uh, there are a lot of women who carry the fullest part right here about a, a little lower incorporating part of the thighs so it just depends okay so we are back up here to this area and we are going to measure our arms I think this is a really important measurement to have especially if you're petite or tall you will find discrepancies in patterns I know I'm always adding length to sleeves so find that shoulder point you already found it it's where when you lift your arm you feel the joint makes a slight bend here you can actually feel your finger sinking in when you put your your hand straight out so that is the point put your tape measure there and do it with your arm bent like this down to your wrist now when you look at the tape measure it will be around the wrist bone depending on where you like the length of your sleeves it's approximately there so it's nice to be able to compare that to a pattern to be able to make length adjustments before you cut that's always nice another problem area for a lot of us is the bicep find the fullest part of your bicep make sure you are at the fullest right there could be different could be higher or lower depending on your body and write that down some patterns tell you what that is in the finished garment measurements others don't but we can measure that and we can always adjust that before cutting into fabric and if you are making a design that's got a long sleeve and a fitted wrist a cuff or some sort of detail like that you might want to know for reference how much your wrist measures you don't end up with a cuff that is super cut uncomfortable and super tight so just know what that is for me my personal preference is that I like about two inches of ease around a cuff so that I'm comfortable that's personal preference so that's it we're finished in the next episode for this series we'll be taking all of these body measurements and comparing them to one pattern I will start my approach with doing length adjustments first making sure that the bust height the waist the hip reference on the pattern matches our body adjusting to that and then we'll dive into maybe the most common problem that a lot of us have which is adjustments to the bust once we have that down then we're going to creep up and move over to the neck and the shoulders i think that's an approach that makes sense there is so many ways to do this and you will find a lot of people telling you how to do this in different ways just by experience and by having a lot of think and pray about this i think this is the approach that i'm going to take and I hope it's going to work for you. I know it's the approach I've taken for years and years of feeding myself and it always works. I'll be showing you how to create a little template you can do on a little cardboard so that you know exactly where the base of the neck is compared to the pattern so that you can always have a really good reference point of height when you want to measure the height of your waist in the front, the back, the height of your bust, you know, the depth of the armhole. I've seen these measurements done taking this middle shoulder point as a reference but you can't reference that on a pattern when you have a pattern you can't know where that is also when you measure the back height of the waist lots of people measure from the base of the neck right here down but patterns don't have the base of the neck where your base of the neck is it's always lower if you look at this t-shirt so it's not a good reference point in my opinion like for really practical pattern work I think this base of the neck is easy easy to place on a pattern so that you can have your measurements really correct so it is a little bit different but i promise it's going to work make sure you're relaxed you know these are form on measurements like if you were making a bodice block you would have much more detail if you were doing that we are trying to fit loose fitting tops well so it is a little bit more simplified and it's a way to start fitting super approachable for you if you haven't delved into this that much start easy <laughs> down the line over time i will be showing you more detail about how to fit a fitted body is full of darts everywhere it's just different but it's better to start with the basics and i hope you print out your measurements chart get this done and next week we'll be looking at length adjustments i'll see you very soon bye